Hey, this is Eric, and in this video we're going to do a deep dive into Google Tools to support all learners. This includes tools and resources to help you and all of your students with text-to-speech, speech-to-text, readability, reading comprehension, audio support, behavior, focus, organization, navigation, and more. So welcome everybody to our session on Google Tools to Support All Learners. And we do have a resource document that goes along with this particular session at bit.ly slash Kurtz dash support. If you haven't pulled that up yet, I would encourage you to do so. It's a document that is just chock full of great resources that we're going to be working our way through in this session. So anything here that I'm sharing that you want to try out, the links are in here, the support materials are in here that will allow you to be able to try all of these things out. Uh, that document, um, you certainly are allowed to you know, bookmark it or add it to your drive or make a copy of it, whatever works best for you. Today though, for this session, we're gonna be talking about Google tools to support all learners. Okay, so what's this session about? Well. Years ago, when I first started doing uh, a version of this session, I had it titled differently. I, I think I called it Google Tools for Special Education or Google Tools for Special Needs. And that, that was fine, but I, I realized, you know, these tools um, are good for all learners because we all struggle at one time or another in one way or another. And so I was saying, well, I don't want people to think this is just a session for, you know, students who might be on an IEP or on a 504, because these are tools that we can use as adults. These are tools that all of our students can benefit from because we all in one way or another struggle. And so that's the idea behind the session is what are tools that we can all benefit from tools for accessibility and accommodation that can uh, come alongside and help our students and help us as well um, these tools many of them are from google but it doesn't mean they're all google tools as far as like google create them but they play nicely in the google e the google ecosystem so when i say google tools to support uh, all learners it could be extensions from other companies that have made an extension that works inside of google docs or works inside of chrome or helps you in google classroom extensions or uh, add-ons or things like that as well. So basically everything we're looking at here today are tools that play nicely inside of the Google ecosystem that many of us work and live in. Uh, also, everything I'm showing you today is free. All of these are free tools. Now, some of them have a paid version but I'll be showing you the free portions of these things. So everything you're seeing today, you can use right away. There's nothing here that you have to go pay for. They're all free tools. Um, some of them, hey, if you do want to upgrade to their premium version and get some more bells and whistles, good, that's great. Support those companies, that's fine. But I know not all schools are able to do so. So I always want to make sure that I'm focusing on things that you definitely can use right away. To bring a little bit of uh, order to this, I have organized the tools into some categories. And these are the categories we're going to work through. Text-to-speech, speech-to-text, readability, reading comprehension, audio support, behavior and focus, and more. Uh, those are the same order in the document. So if you're heading down through the document, you'll see there's text-to-speech on page two, and then speech-to-text, readability, reading comprehension, audio support. So we're going to work right down this list of tools as we work through this here today. All right, I think that's it. I think that gets us to where we need to be. Uh, I know a few people did just join recently, so if you haven't grabbed the document, bit.ly slash Kurtz support, that'll always get you there. And I do update that document frequently. So uh, if you wanna bookmark it, return to it later, um, I'll always have the latest you know, updates in there. All right, let's get on into this and get going. So. Uh, the first category that we're going to be taking a look at today is text to speech tools. So we're talking about something that's going to read text aloud for our students. And there are a lot of tools that can do this. There's things like read and write for Google Chrome. There's immersive reader. There's read aloud. There's announceify. Uh, if we look in the agenda document, I think I've even got more in there on page two and three. I've got other things linked in here as well that fall under the category of text to speech. Um, so what I'm going to probably do in each section is just pick 
a couple because we wouldn't have time to go through everything. So I'll probably pick two, maybe three of my favorites out of each of these sections to demonstrate for you. If you've got questions, though, if I skip over something that you wanted to see, let me know, put it in the chat, ask questions. And if you've got tools I've not included, throw those in the chat, share it with us so that we all know what other things are out there. Okay, so let's start with text-to-speech. Two of my favorites that I would like to begin with are Read and Write and Immersive Reader. Now, both of these are Chrome Web extensions. So that means they do need to be installed, but they are free. And yes, like I said, there, sometimes there's a paid version. Read and Write has a free version and a paid version. The text-to-speech part, totally free. That's just part of the free version of it. Um, but both of these would need to be installed as an extension. Now, I've already got everything pre-installed, so I'm not going to go through that process with you. But if you want to try out any of these, please note that I have the links right in the agenda document. So next to Read and Write, there's the extension link to install it. And next to Immersive Reader, there's the extension link to install it. These links will take you out to the Chrome Web Store. And then from the Chrome Web Store, you can install any of these extensions. Now, extensions are going to work on Chromebooks. They're going to work on Windows PCs. They're going to work on Macs. So extensions would work on any of those sort of devices. All right. So let's take a look at these two. So Read and Write and Immersive Reader. Now, Read and Write, what it does when you have this extension installed is it will give you a, uh, a little floating or a drop-down toolbar that has uh, tools on it. Again, some of them part of the premium version, uh, but the free part we're talking about includes a text-to-speech tool. And if we want to take that for a spin, uh, I'm going to head out to Dogo News, and I'll use this as an example. So Dogo News is a kids' current event article website, lots of great articles for students. Let's say a student comes here and they want to read an article about the Perseus meteor showers, but they want to have perhaps the article read aloud to them. Maybe it's uh, something that just helps to for them to read it and hear it at the same time, or maybe they need it read to them because they're not able to read it. Or it could also just be a multitasking thing. I have done this. I have needed to get something done and I've needed to have something read at the same time. So I'll be working on something while I have read and write, reading me an article that I, I need to be listening to. And so even if it's for that purpose, all of these things can be beneficial reasons for using a tool like this. Okay, well, how does it work? Well, when I get to the site, if I have read and write installed, which again, like I said, I've already pre-installed these, what happens is you get these little icons way up in the top right corner of your Chrome browser. Those are the extensions. So read and write looks like a little purple puzzle piece way up here in the top right corner of my browser. If I come up and give a click on the read and write extension, then it opens up a little pop-up uh, floating toolbar there. Give it a second to pop up there. Hey, read and write, where are you at? Maybe I, I may have to refresh the page. Sometimes uh, I forget when I've turned things on here. Let me refresh the page and I'll click it again. Sorry about that. Give it a second to pop up and come on, read and write. I believe in you. <laughs> it's going to be, how about that? It's being a little bit uh, persnickety with me at the moment. I wonder why read and write's not popping up here. Let me take a look inside of Google Docs. <gasps> I may have to turn it off and back on. Hang on one second, guys. <laughs> I'm going to turn it off and back on. It looks like read and write has decided uh, to play shy with us at the moment. Here, let's turn it off <laughs> and let me turn it back. While I'm doing that, heads up, I use an extension to manage my extensions, because I have so many of these. So I use an extension called Extensity. It lets me turn things on and off, so I'm not using the same you know, extensions all the time, because that can really take up a lot of, uh, a lot of computer memory if you're running uh, your extensions all at once. Oh, this, oh, there it is, see, there you go. I'm happy it came up. <laughs> so that's another little lesson for us, I guess. If something doesn't work, have you tried turning it off and back on again? <laughs> so there you go. Um, so anyway, this is what the read and write toolbar looks like. Um, and when you click on it, it just pops open as this floating toolbar. Uh, the button that I want to show you guys is the play button here. That's the text to speech button. So the idea is I'm going to come in and I'm going to select some text and then I'm going to click the play button and it will read it aloud for me. Now for you guys to hear it, I do need to plug my speaker in the way Google Meet is set up for this particular one. The sound isn't going to come through unless I do that. So I will periodically plug and unplug my speaker so you can hear this. So I'm going to plug in my speaker, may get a little feedback. Sorry about that, guys. But let's hit play. Though often referred to as shooting or falling stars, meteors are remains of cosmic dust and dirt shed by comets traveling through the area. All right. 
and again, sorry if you're getting some extra feedback in there, uh, but that, that way it'll, it'll actually come through and you can hear uh, that hopefully a little bit. Um, and so that's the idea is we come in and we highlight the text and then we hit the play button and it reads it aloud. So this works great if I'm on a website. It also works well inside of documents. Let me refresh this now that I have uh, turned it off and back on again, make sure it knows it's there. Uh, so let's say that there it is. Yeah, see, it is there. <laughs> uh, so you can hide it or, or expand it out. So here, and I'm going to unplug my speaker for just a second, then I'll plug it back in again. Um, so let's say I'm inside of a Google document. Read and write works in here as well. And that's not always the case. Sometimes text to speech tools work well on a website, but they don't work well inside of documents. Well, let's say I'm writing a report. And before I turn in my report, I want to hear my own writing read back to me. This is an excellent way to do self-editing because we will not see mistakes a lot of times if we're reading it ourselves. We'll just read right past the mistake. But when we hear it, we might catch it a little bit better. So I could do the same thing. I could come in here and I could select some text and then I could hit the play button and have that read aloud. Now, by the way, we can also change the voices. So I think that was like, Tom or something. I believe that's one of the standard voices. You can always hit the little three dots button at the end of the read and write toolbar and go into your settings. And there's loads of voices you can pick from in here. So we could switch over to, you know, different accents, different languages um, to find a voice that works well for the students. So uh, let me see, that was Tom, I'll grab, um, we'll just, yeah, we'll do Allison, let's see. And we also speed up or slow down the voice as well. So let's go ahead, I'll plug my speaker back in so we can hear this and let's hear what this sounds like. Washington were the first president of the United States. George Washington were the first president of the United States. There we go, all right, so you can see that. Awesome. Now, read and write does a lot more than just that. Uh, there are a lot of other buttons <laughs> up here on the uh, toolbar. The free version, though, includes the text to speech, and the free version also includes the translator tool. So, one of the buttons up here, there it is, the translation tool. If you have that turned on and you select a word, um, it will then give you translation and pronunciation based upon the, the language you chose up in the settings. Now, there's a whole whole bunch of other really cool features on the read and write toolbar. Those are part of the premium version. The cool thing though that I will say is as an educator, you're actually allowed to have the full paid version for free. So they, that's just a, that's, there's no strings attached. This is the way text help does it. The company that does read and write text help, they let educators use the full version at no cost. That's why I have all the buttons here. I didn't pay for it. I just registered as an educator. So if you want to try out some of the other buttons on there too, I do have a link on page two next to the link to install read and write. I've got a link to their website where you can say, Hey, I'm an educator. And you just fill out this form here. You say, I want to use read and write you fill out the form and give them about 24 hours they go through and they process that and you'll get upgraded and you'll have all the buttons because there's a lot of really cool things if we have time I don't know if we'll have time to, if, if uh, we've been running out of time, of course, with all the sessions. If I have time at the end, I am happy to come back around and talk about some of the premium buttons in there that you get for free as, as a teacher, as, as an educator. But when it comes to just text-to-speech, no worries at all. Everybody can use the free version and can do that. So that's great if you're on a website or a document. But I also love to have more tools to choose from, you know, not just one option. So let's talk about Immersive Reader as well. This is from Microsoft, but it works inside of Chrome. There's a web extension for Immersive Reader. And it's similar, but it's got its own bells and whistles to it that are kind of neat. I've already got it installed. Uh, if you want to install any of these, remember, all the links are in here to install them. But let's say I want to do Immersive Reader. And so I come here back to my... Perseid Meteor Shower article, and I select the text that I want to have read aloud, but instead of going up and clicking on the uh, extensions like we did before, the way Immersive Reader works is slightly different. You right-click on the selected text, and after you right-click on it, you choose Help Me Read This. And what that does is that, that is the, that's the extension, that's the context menu for Immersive Reader. So when you click Help Me Read This, it's going to grab that text and pull it into a window where it's just by itself. It just grabs the text and puts it into its own little page there. And then at the bottom, you've got a play button. So let's plug my speaker back in so you can hear it. And I will hit play. Though often referred to as shooting or falling stars, 
Meteors are remains of cosmic dust and dirt shed by comets traveling through the area. Awesome. There we go. Now, Immersive Reader only has two voices with it. So if you click the little gear, you can choose male or female, but you can also change the speed. Having said that, though, it does have some other really neat features that are just free. They're just part of it. Up in the top right-hand corner, there's three buttons up here. There's the Text Preferences button, where you can change the size of the text. There is also the option to change the font. Sometimes certain fonts are easier to read, to read than others. And then there's also the themes where you can change the background color. So instead of a bright white background with black text, it may be easier to read on some of these other color options. The next menu is the grammar options menu. And this is really cool. It's got a syllables button. You can flip the switch and it breaks the words down into their syllables. So you can see the syllable breaks in the words. And if you want, you can also turn on color coding and labeling of parts of speech. So nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs can get color-coded and labeled. So really nifty stuff. I really like that a lot. And then the last thing it has is a reading preferences section where you can turn on or off a picture dictionary. And you can also turn on or off a uh, translation option. So if you want to pick a language that you want to translate things into, come in here, choose the language. And now when I've got those on, I can come over here and anything I click on, it will give me a translation of it and pictures that go along with it. Now, not everything's going to have pictures. A lot of these things will, but if I click on enough things, eventually I'll probably find something that doesn't, you know, like the Perseids, that it itself doesn't have a picture with it. Uh, but that's still a really nice way to get some additional support. And when you're done, just hit the back arrow and you can head back to your original article. So those are two of my favorites in the category of text to speech. If you're trying to have text read aloud, the read and write's a great option. Immersive reader's a great option. Okay. I do want to show one more thing, though, before we move on to our next category. Um, so sitting next to me, I've got my Chromebook sitting to the side of me here. I'm on a Windows device at the moment, but I've got my Chromebook sitting next to me because Chrome has a bunch of built-in accessibility tools as well. Now, you can use Read and Write on a Chromebook. You can use Immersive Reader on a Chromebook, but Chromebooks also have just stuff built in, such as uh, a Select-to-Speak tool, which is a text-to-speech tool that's just built right in. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my Chromebook over here. Give me just a second. Uh, I'm going to use, uh, I was joking about this earlier in another session, I'm using Chrome Remote Desktop <laughs> to show <laughs> my Chromebook on the screen. So let me just type in the randomly generated code so it'll connect. Give me one second here. It uh, falls asleep if you don't. Uh, use it quick enough and or I, I or don't go back to it. So I think it uh, lost the connection. I just got to reconnect it. There it is. So this tab is my Chromebook. <laughs> so I've got my Chromebook showing inside of this tab. Um, and so on a Chromebook, you can go down to the bottom right hand corner of your Chromebook and you can click where the clock is at and that will pop up your system tray. And one of the things you should have in there is an accessibility section. And when you click on that, you get all of these great accommodation and accessibility tools like Select to Speak, which is one we're going to take a look at here in a second. Now, if you don't get that, if you say, hey, Eric, I went to my Chromebook. I clicked on the tray, I don't see accessibility. Um, this is just like a, a quick access. If you don't see this button, you can go into your settings above and you can dig all the way into your accessibility tools there too. But you can also go into your settings and if you go to accessibility in the settings, you can flip the switch that says always show accessibility options in the system menu. That's what gives you that quick access. You don't have to dig into here every single time. So if I come down here, and I go to accessibility, I can choose like select to speak. Now with that chosen, I can go to something like Dogo News again, and I could come down here and say, I wanna have my Chromebook read this aloud. So I could use Read and Write, I could use Immersive Reader, but I don't have to. Instead, I can click on the select to speak button and then select the text that I want to have it read. Now, uh, hopefully you'll hear it. I've got my uh, my Chromebook speaker turned up kind of loud, so I hope it'll come through for you, okay? So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to click on Select to Speak, and then I'm going to drag a box around this, and let's see. There are over 30 meteor showers annually. However, few are as spectacular as the Perseids. 
Excellent. Okay, that seemed to work pretty well. Uh, you can also uh, jump forward and backwards between sentences and paragraphs, and you can change the speed at which it reads. If you want to change the voice, you can do that, but you do have to dig into those settings and go deeper, and then you can pick different voices from there. So pretty cool. Uh, that's just built right into the Chrome operating system. Good, good stuff. All right. So I'm going to take a quick pause as we move to our next category, because I have seen a little bit of activity over in the chat. I want to make sure that uh, we address anything in there. But we're going to move into our next category here in a second on speech to text. So we're going to go the other direction. So if we want to speak and have our words typed up for us. Uh, quick look here. Let's see. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Somebody asked, what was the extension to manage the extensions? Yeah. So I use one called Extensity. Uh, there's probably a bunch that do it. I've been really happy with Extensity. To, extensity. Uh, it shows all of my extensions, and I can just click them on or off whenever I need to turn them on or off. It also allows me to save profiles. So like, you know, for this session, Google Tools to Support Learners, I have a profile called Support, and it knows that I want all of these extensions, and it just loads them up for me. So it's really cool. It's, it's a nice it's a nice extension. I, I like that a lot. Um, next question in here, uh, do the materials you're sharing work on an iPad? So some of the things we're going to be looking at today do. Uh, some don't, um, like extensions. Extensions, that's going to be a Chromebook or a Mac or a PC. But there's other things in here that we're talking about um, that are mobile oriented. Um, so uh, I do have some mobile apps here, some of them um, Android, some of them Android and iOS as well. So for example, thanks for mentioning that. Hey, I'll just show you real quick. Let me, let me do a quick because I don't want to leave people out if somebody's like, well, I'm on a I'm on a mobile device. I've got an iPad or something. Um, so I am not. I'm not a, a, an iPad uh, expert. I don't actually own an iPhone or an, an iPad. I've got an Android phone. Um, but uh, there are a lot of things that translate between the two of them. So let me show you something really cool as an option. Um, when it comes to like text to speech, let's say you want to have something read aloud um, and it's something physical, like you've got an actual physical piece of paper and you're like, oh, I'd like that sign or that document or this, you know, pamphlet read aloud to me. Well, there is a um, an app for um, Android and iOS called Google Lens. And I'm gonna pull it up on my phone here. Then I'm gonna throw that up on the screen so you guys can see this. It's really cool. Just gotta get to the right spot and get it up on the screen. Here it is, there's Google Lens. Um, and so the way it works is I'll, let me get this up on the screen for you. Give me just a second to find my right tab here. There it is. All right, so there's my phone. <laughs> so there's, hey guys, howdy. Uh, so there, there's my phone and this is the Google Lens app. Now with Google Lens, what I can do is I can like point it at, you know, a real world thing. And I can use Google Lens to do things like search, for that information um, or do a lot of other things. But I also can, and translating, but I can also just choose text where it tries to find the text on the page. And so if I say, okay, take a look at this page and I choose text and I click the button here, what it's gonna do is it's going to be able to grab that text. And I don't know if I've got my volume turned up. I hope it, hopefully it's up loud enough. I can say, yeah, let's listen to this. The Google Lens tool can be used on a mobile device to take a picture of text and then have that text read aloud to the user. Pretty cool. And so uh, that would be an example of something on mobile. Now, Google Lens is also built into Google Photos. So if you use uh, Google Photos as well, you can use that to take a picture as well, which is really cool. All right. Um, I don't think I see anything else at the moment there. Um, oh, uh, Jimmy asked, is there anything that will read within a Google form? Everything we just showed would, yes, all of those tools. Yeah. So like if I were to uh, open up, I think I've got a sample form here. So if I were to open up a form here, absolutely. Any of these like uh, read and write, like if I click on read and write and uh, get that to pop up here, hang on just a second. Oh, read and write's being being finicky again. I don't know why uh, I'm having so many trouble, so much trouble with it popping up here today. Hold on, let's see if it's going to play nicely. There it is. Okay, so yeah, if I have a form, I could come here and I could, you know, select my text. Here, let me plug in my speaker so you guys can hear this, and I'll hit play. Sample form for speech to text. Eric Docker. I'll stop that. <laughs> there you go. And so yeah, I could I could do that right from uh, from read and write, or let's jump over to my Chromebook 
if I'm on my Chromebook, here's my Chromebook. I could say, okay, let's click on select to speak and let's come up and select some text. Enter your answer below. And so, yep, there you go. So uh, yeah, these things would work on a form as well. Good question. Uh, Tina says, will Google Lens translate text? Yes, it will. Uh, Google Lens has a translate button on there as well. It'll take the same text and translate it for you. Cool. All right. Well, we got to keep moving. My gosh, we got so much to look at uh, and we're always never enough time. But thank you for your questions. Those are fantastic questions. So let's talk about our next category, speech to text. So going the other direction, I want to speak and I want my words to get typed up for me. This can be really helpful for students who are struggling with typing. You know, maybe there's a student who just is not a fast typist, or maybe they're struggling with spelling, or maybe they've injured their hand. It could be a, so many different reasons. And they're getting frustrated because they're trying to write. They've got all these wonderful ideas in their head, and they just can't get them onto the page because it's taking too long, it's frustrating, it's difficult for them. So there are some great tools for speech to text. Um, again, we're just gonna look at a couple. There's lots we could explore. The first one that we're gonna take a look at is Docs Voice Typing. Now, this one does not need to be installed. It's not an extension, it's not an add-on. This is just part of Google Docs. And you maybe already totally know about this, but I, I definitely want to mention in case somebody doesn't know about it, uh, the way docs voice typing works is if I'm in a document and I want to type up some more, but instead of typing, I want to speak the, the text, all you have to do is go up to the tools menu and choose voice typing from the dropdown. When you do that, you get this little pop-up microphone and you just click the mic and start talking. Let's try it out. Now that I have clicked on the microphone, anything I say will automatically be typed into the document, period. This is an excellent way for students to be able to get their ideas onto the page, period. And there you go. Awesome. Now, of course, it's going to work better in a quieter room and, you know, if the student speaks, you know, relatively clearly. But Google's AI has come so far. It's so much more accurate than it used to be. So this is a great way just to get their ideas out. They can go back and clean it up and fix things if they need to later. It also lets you speak in different languages. You can pick different languages there as well. It does work in slides, too. It's not just a docs thing. So if I go to Google Slides, if I make a new slideshow, so let's just fire up a quick demo slideshow here. Give it a second to load up there. Demo slideshow. All right. And let's say I wanted to do uh, Doc's voice typing here. Sure thing. Again, go up to the tools menu and go down to voice type. It's going to pop up the little microphone. The only difference here is where it puts the text. When you do voice typing in slides, it drops it down in the speaker notes below. But you can always copy and paste it up later if you need. So let's try that out. Now that I have clicked on the microphone, anything I say will automatically be typed into the speaker notes section below the slideshow, period. There you go. There it is. I can come down here. I can copy that. I can come up here and paste it, you know, if you needed to, but it's right there for you. So that's great um, if you are in a slideshow or if you're in a document. Well, what if you're not? <laughs> what if you're in something else? Like, uh, let's grab our form again. Oh, I think I closed out of our form. Let's grab our form again. You know, let's say I'm not in a document. I'm not in a slideshow. I am in something like, you know, a Google form. Well, for that, we've got a few options. If you're on a PC or a Mac, um, you certainly could use an extension called Voice in Voice Typing. So that's linked right in here, page three of our document. There's the Voice in Voice Typing extension. And it works just like Docs Voice Typing, but it works for other tools like Google Forms. Let me zoom in so you can actually see this a little bit better. So here is my Google Form, and I want to type in here. But instead of typing in, I'm going to use the microphone. And the way I'm going to do it is up here in my top extension bar, this little microphone icon, that's voice in voice typing. Because I've got the extension installed, there's the little microphone, OK? So I click in the form. I come up and I click on the voice in voice typing microphone. And let's try it out. Now that I have clicked on the extension, anything I say will automatically be typed into the Google form below, period. Hey, awesome. There we go. <laughs> Works great. So that is a, that's a great option for things that aren't 
docs or slides. Now, remember we keep talking about Chromebooks though too. So yes, if you're on a Chromebook, there is a built-in dictation tool here. So this does not need to be installed. It's not an extension. It's just part of the accessibility. So on a Chromebook, if I come down and click on my clock in the bottom right to open up my system menu and I click on accessibility, I can then click on dictation. And when I do, I get this little microphone that's going to appear down here at the bottom. So we hit dictation. There's my little microphone. Now I can use that to talk and fill in anything as well. So let me try that. Hopefully my Chromebook can hear me. It's over to the side of me here. So I'm gonna click in this box and I'm gonna click on dictation. Now that I have clicked on the Chromebook dictation tool, anything I say will automatically be typed up for me, period. And there we go. Awesome. So we can use that anywhere on a Chromebook as well. So those are some great tools for speech to text. I want to throw one more thing into the mix before we move on to our next category here. Speech to text, another way to think of speech to text is also captioning. So captioning is a big part of speech to text. What we've seen so far is more like, okay, I want to speak and have it type up for me because I'm going to write a paper or I'm going to fill out a form. Well, Another great way for speech to text is when you are watching a video or listening to somebody present is to be able to have their speech automatically turned into captions, so speech to text, so you can read along. Um, there's been a lot of studies that have been done that show hearing somebody speak and seeing their words at the same time helps with comprehension and it helps with uh, students learning to read, being able to say, oh, that's what that word looks like. And uh, helps with, just with, with uh, you know, if students have a hard time hearing, maybe they're in the back of the classroom and <laughs> there's a mower going outside, you know, I mean, that kind of stuff happens, you know, and it can be hard to hear. So being able to listen and see at the same time. Now, me personally, I use captions all the time. Uh, when my daughter was very young, uh, as a baby, when I'd finally get her to go to bed at night, I didn't want to wake her up, but I wanted to watch a TV show. So I would turn on closed captioning when I watch shows and turn the volume real low. So don't wake the baby, <laughs> but I can still watch my shows. And I, I just, I do it forever now. I mean, she's 30 years old now. And so that's not an issue. Uh, but anytime I watch any show, I have the closed captions on because I pick up so much more stuff that I would have missed otherwise. Well, here's the cool thing. A lot of Google tools have live captioning built in. So Google Meet, for example, the, what we're in right this moment, if you guys look at the bottom of your Google Meet, you will see a button that says CC for closed captioning. You can click that button and you can read everything I'm saying. As I'm speaking, it will automatically turn that into closed captions for you. So Google Meet does that. Google Slides does it as well. So let's come over to this slideshow and let's say I wanted to run this slideshow, but I wanted to also let it caption my text, my speech. Absolutely. So if I come up here and let's present the slideshow, I know this is just a not a very interesting slideshow, but I'm presenting the slideshow. If I go to the bottom left corner to the navigation bar and I click on the three dots, there is a captions menu option. I can come in here and I can say, let's toggle the captions on. Now that I've turned that on, anything I say will automatically be closed captioned and will show up in this case above the slideshow. Although you can adjust that. If you go back to the three dots button and go back to captions, you can choose text position from top to bottom and text size from small all the way up to extra large. So while you're presenting, students can also see your words. When you're done, just click on the toggle option again, and it will turn those captions off. There you go. Awesome. Good stuff. And the same thing's true for like YouTube. If you're watching a YouTube video, YouTube automatically captions videos. You don't have to, uh, you know, find a video that has specifically been captioned. You can, uh, I think I got this muted so it shouldn't come through. If I'm playing like this video I did on Doc's checklists, I didn't caption this video, but if I click on the CC button at the bottom, 
there it is. There is the auto-generated English, you know, captions for that, you know, and you can go into your settings there and you can adjust it. If you want to switch to a different language, you can do auto translate and have the captions be in a different language. You can also go into the options and change the size. If it's hard to see, you can make the captions bigger. A lot of really great options in there. So the point of what I'm saying is uh, tech or speech to text isn't just for typing up things. It's also for reading things as they're being spoken. All right, well, let's pause there. Uh, we're going to head into our next category, which is readability, but it's possible there are some things popping up. If not, no worries. I'm just going to take a quick look. Nope, it looks like we're good. I don't see anything else in the chat at the moment. Please do, again, feel free to throw things in the Q&A or the chat. All right, next category, readability. So what is this category about? So what we're talking about here would be anything that makes it easier for a user to read the content they've come across. Th there's a lot of possibilities in this category, depending. And so we're going to hit several of these just to show you some ideas. One of the first things that I've gotten under readability is one of the simplest, and that is thinking about your font choice that you use. So when you're creating a, a Google document or a slideshow or a Google form, pretty much anything you're creating with Google, you can pick different types of fonts. So like if I go to my George Washington report, uh, I could come in here and I could select all my text and I could go up to my font drop down and I could pick a different font. I could say, let's turn all of this text into some other font here. That's pretty normal. I think most of us are familiar with doing that. Hopefully you also know that you're allowed to choose fonts that are not in your list here. So when you go to this font dropdown, the top thing says more fonts. And if you click more fonts, you get access to over 1,400 fonts from Google. And there's loads of them. You can search through them and filter them and find all these great fonts. Well, there's a particular font that I like to draw attention to for you, which is called Lexend. Lexend was a font designed specifically for people with, with dyslexia or struggling readers to help improve reading performance and reduce visual stress. So I have started using the Lexin font in a lot of my stuff just because it's like, well, hey, if that helps, great. So for example, if I go to my George Washington report and I select all my text and I go up to my font menu, I've already got Lexend installed. If I didn't, I could go to more fonts and I could just type in Lexend and there it is. There's the Lexend font. Just check it and now you've got it. It's now in your list. So if I come here and I say, okay, I've got Lexend, let's turn it on, boom. It now reformats all of this into Lexin font. And um, so I've been doing that. So like if you look at my help guide, the help guide we're working through, this uh, this resource document, this is all in Lexin. And so thinking about your font choice when you're making a slideshow or a handout or a Google form, can even that in itself be something that can be beneficial for the students? And by the way, this document that we're going through, again, if for any reason somebody uh, joined us late and did not get a chance to pull it up, just as a reminder to you, uh, it is bit.ly slash Kurtz dash support. That gets you to that uh, Google document. Uh, that we're going through there. All right. So uh, next up, let's see some other readability tools. How about something like Mercury Reader? So Mercury Reader is a Chrome extension that cleans up web pages. It removes distracting elements so you can just focus on what you're trying to read. So let's head back over to Dogo News. So here we go, Dogo News. Now, I love this site, but it is, yeah, it's kind of busy. There's some advertisements over here, popular articles here. There's, uh, I think there's yeah, comments at the bottom. So yeah, there's a lot going on here. Well, if I have Mercury Reader installed, it gives me a little rocket ship icon up in my extensions. So all I do is go to my article, come up here and click on the little Mercury Reader extension, give it a moment, and there we go. It strips out everything from the page except for the articles, core content, and any videos or pictures with the article. But everything else, the ads are gone, the comments are gone, the you know related links are gone. It's just the article. And that could help you focus on what you need to read there. And you can make some small adjustments. There's a little gear up here on the top. You could switch it to a dark theme or change the font or change the font size. The only thing that it doesn't have, it doesn't have a save button to like save a copy of this. So the workaround that I usually suggest is if you pretend you're going to print it, 
print it, instead of printing it to an actual printer, you can choose save as a PDF. So like if I go control P for print on a Windows computer, control P is for print. Instead of printing it to my actual laser jet sitting next to me, I can say save as PDF and it will print it to a PDF and then you get a cleaned up version that way. So that's, that's a thought. That is a possibility uh, if you wanted to do that. Uh, now, there's lots of others. We're not going to go into detail on these. I'll just give you a quick elevator pitch. We've got cool things like Reader View, Alpha Text, Line Height Adjuster, Helper Bird. All of these are just collections of lots of readability tools to change line spacing, background color, fonts. Um, uh, let's see what else do we have here. Um, open Dyslexic and d d d Dyslexia Friendly. Uh, uh, these are... Um, to change the font on the whole web page, uh, just like Lexand is a font that can be helpful for people who are struggling to read. The open dyslexic font is also one that it's designed to have like a thicker bottom of the letter and unique shapes. So it's harder for the brain to flip them around and, and get confused on that. So that's another extension that can change the font on all of your web pages. Then we've got things like Wasp Line Reader, which helps students stay on the correct line when they're reading. So when you get to the end of a line, if it's bright red at the end of the line, it's bright red at the start of the next line or blue to blue. That way you don't reread the same line twice or skip a line. It just helps with that color gradient there. Then there's things like color overlay and in overlay and AT bar. These address scotoptic sensitivity syndrome, which is if you ever had a student who takes a, uh, if they have a piece of paper and they put a colored transparency on top of it and that helps them read it better, this mimics that by putting a color overlay on web pages. Uh, then we've got things like Magic Scroll, Web Reader, and Visor. Visor darkens the screen except for a bright bar that you can drag up and down to focus on the part you're reading. High contrast changes the background color so that it's easier to read, uh, and on and on. Oh, and Chromebooks. Let's look at some Chromebook things for readability. So let's pull... Uh, the, our Chromebook back up and talk about those. There's some cool readability things here on a Chromebook as well. So if I come down to my accessibility options here, I'm going to turn off select to speak and dictation since we're not using those at the moment. But there's readability things here like the uh, magnifier. There's the, the docked magnifier. I like that. The docked magnifier allows you to uh, see the bottom screen at the normal size, and then it gives you a magnification of it at the top. So as you scroll down through, you can get a larger magnification at the top. That can certainly help with readability. Let's uncheck that. Um, and then other things that might be under readability here, um, we do have a, a high contrast mode that can make it easier to, again, change to invert the colors so that you can see uh, uh, text a little bit easier. Awesome, good stuff. Well, we're going to move into our next category, which is reading comprehension. Uh, but again, I'm going to take a quick look at the chat. Um, let's see. There was a question. Uh, can we turn off closed captions so students can't cheat <laughs> while during a spelling or dictation test? Um, so as far as turning off closed captions, hmm. Um, so they would only be able to access them like if they were in a Google Meet themselves, which probably wouldn't be the case if they were in class. In Google Slides, you're the one that's turning them on in Slides. Um, I'm trying to think where else they might come across the closed captions besides that. So um, I guess the, the short answer is no, I'm not aware of ways to disable the option to turn on closed captions, but I don't know how often it would be beneficial, like if you were in a Google form, um, to you would have an option there to turn on closed captions. So I'm not sure if that would be a, a particular problem for that. If I'm missing the point, though, please do clarify that in the chat. I'm sorry if I'm misunderstanding your question. All right, let's move into reading comprehension. So now we're talking about tools that can help students understand what they've read. So readability helps them read the content. Reading comprehension helps them understand what they read. So one of the things I love in this is Google Dictionary. Google Dictionary is a, an extension that allows you to simply double click on any word you come across and it will pop up a definition 
and a pronunciation of that word. So the idea is the student is reading along and they get to something they don't know. They're not sure what the word means. And there's a lot of ways to figure out through context clues and things like that. But this is just another option. Like if they weren't sure what the word, you know, coincide meant, they could just double click on it. And as long as they have Google Dictionary installed, the extension, they'll get a pronunciation and a definition of that word. And so that's just another option, like maybe they don't know what, what celestial means. They could click on that. And if you double click on any word, you get that pop-up definition. So nice additional support for students. Next up in reading comprehension would be summarization tools, things like Summary or Quillbot or Auto Highlight. These are tools that take your article and they use artificial intelligence to create a summarized version of the article. So if a student needs to read a big long article, we still want them to read the article, but this could also help them get the gist of it. So maybe they read the article and then they read the summary to be like, okay, let's pull it all together. Or maybe they read the summary first so they get the general idea of what the article is going to be about and then they go in and read the article. So, for example, Quillbot. This is a great one. Uh, let me demonstrate that one for you. Uh, I think I have Quill, Quillbot turned off at the moment, but I will turn it back on. Let's get Quillbot on here. There we go. And now that I've got it on, I may have to refresh my page so it knows it's there. Okay. Let's click on Quillbot here and let's click on open sidebar. There we go. So here is the Quillbot extension sidebar. And it has three uh, options. There's a paraphraser, a grammar checker, and a summarizer. We're going to demonstrate the summarizer for this example. So from the top, I'm going to choose summarizer. Well, what you do is you copy and paste the text from your article into here. Now, I don't know if this will be the best example because this is a pretty short article. So this one probably doesn't really need to summarize as much. I, I, I should do this. I should find a longer article, but that's okay. We'll just, we'll just do this. We'll grab our text. Uh, and uh, I am grabbing it in pieces just because I wasn't sure if I don't want to grab the um, the captions under the pictures. I don't know if that would throw it off or not. So, okay, there we go. So, again, I don't know if this one will be all that impressive. It's a pretty short article, but we'll still get the general idea behind it. So, what we do is we take our text from the article and we put it over here into Quillbot. We can pick keywords too if we want to, you know, emphasize certain things. But as long as we're happy with this, we just click summarize. Give it a moment, and now it's going to come back with a blurb telling you this is the gist of what this article is about. You can then go up to the length option, and from the length, you can change it to a longer summarization and re-summarize it, or you can go back up and make it even longer. Come back up here, make it even longer, and re-summarize it. And again, for a longer article, probably would be a little bit more impressive, but still, we're getting the gist of it. Another option is, instead of a summarization, it has another mode up here, which is key sentences. So instead of paragraph, you can do key sentences, where it gives you bullet points of key ideas from the article. But again, that's the whole point, to try to support our students with these key points or summarizations from things they're reading. All right. We are getting closer to the end of the time, but we're also getting closer to the end of our, <laughs> of our content, so I think we're doing okay here. Uh, let's see if I can hit a few more things with the time that we have. Next category is audio support. So for audio support, what I mean is something that allows you to add audio, maybe your voice, into documents, slideshows, quizzes in Google Forms, things like that. Um, and it could be to give instructions. It could be to read the material. Um, but it's pre-recorded audio support. Um, there's a lot of tools for this, too, like Moat does this. Read and Write has an option for this. Google Slides has an audio feature. I would still say Moat is, 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 is my favorite out of this batch. I really think it just makes it so simple to do. If you're not familiar with Moat, it's an extension that lets you record your voice and put it pretty much anywhere. You can add your voice to documents, slideshows, forms, Google Classroom. Students can use it as well. Uh, it does have a free version and a paid version. Um, and so, for example, I'll just show you real quick the idea behind Moat. Let's say I come here to my George Washington report and I wanted to leave audio feedback for my student. Uh, maybe I want to tell them to watch out for spelling errors. So I could select the text click here to leave a comment, but instead of typing up a comment, I can click the little moot icon and I can record a comment. So let me click on this. Watch out for spelling errors. 
And then I can hit comment, give that a moment, and there we go. I'll plug in my speaker so you can actually hear it that, it, that it did work. Let me plug in the speaker here for you guys to hear it. Watch out for spelling errors. There we go. Um, and so in a case like that, the student now, when they open up their document, they're going to see, oh, Mr. Kurtz left me feedback, but it's not just, you know, typed up feedback. They're actually can hear me speaking to them, giving them feedback. Now, there is so much more you can do with Moot than that. I actually did a, a webinar on that that I've included in um, the recorded uh, sessions for the Spark Conference. It is linked in here, so you can get to it right from here. If you go to the Moat section on page five, I do have the one-hour webinar linked in here, but I also have it on the uh, Spark uh, site. If you go to the pre-recorded sessions, I did put that in there. Oh, I think I called it something like, you know, marvelous moat activities. You have to always be alliterative when you do these things. Uh, so I think it's, uh, there it is, marvelous moat activities for schools. So you can uh, get it through there as well. Um, but it's a great way to add audio right into um, all of your Google files. So for example, here is a... Um, Here's a slideshow I did a while back to demonstrate this kind of idea. This is one on long and short vowel sounds. So this is a Google slideshow that the students would get a copy of, and then there's directions. And then what they do is they need to categorize things into, you know, like short A, long A. And sometimes it's pictures. Sometimes it's adding their own pictures. Sometimes it's putting words in. And we've got all the different vowel sounds. But notice there's these little speaker icons. Moat can put in these little recordings for you. And so the idea is you click on Moat and then you just click the record here. It records your voice and boop, it just drops these little speaker icons in here. So now here, let's plug in my speaker again so you can hear it. So now if I come and I click on one of these, drag the pictures here that use the short A sound. The short A sound goes ah. Or if I come over to the pictures here, Ah. Rain. There we go. Hat. Excellent. And so in a case like that, we're using audio support two ways. We're using it for spoken directions, but we're also using it by building it right into uh, the activity. So this can be great for... Google Forms, if you're doing like a spelling test, you know, like you were talking about earlier, you can have your voice recorded the spelling word so it's not spelled out for them. They're just hearing it and then they're typing in their answer or, you know, fluency, things like that. So Moat, I think, is a great one as well to support our students for audio. Oh, okay, we're getting close to the end of our time. So the last thing here, I'll just mention briefly, uh, I've got a section here on behavior, focus, and organization. And this includes lots of great tools like Simple Blocker to help remove distracting websites, uBlock Origin to block advertisements so students can focus, things like Move It that gives students periodic wiggle breaks so they can focus knowing that they're gonna get a pop-up telling them to do something physical every 15 minutes or so. Uh, things like Google Keep, which is a website, it's an app, it's an extension. Basically, it allows students to save all of their notes and ideas and links and resources. So if I'm writing a paper on George Washington, I can keep dropping all of my links and quotes and details into Google Keep. And then when it's time to write the paper, I can come over here to my sidebar and way up here in my sidebar is the Google Keep icon. And then I can find all of my notes and links and images and everything I've been throwing in there and I can then add them into my document. So it's a great way to stay organized. Uh, and then the last thing out of that section is always a shout out to Pear Deck. Uh, Pear Deck is another free uh, tool that there is a paid version, but the free version is great. It allows you to add interactive elements to your slideshows. So when you are doing a presentation, the students aren't just sitting there listening to it, they're actually able to answer multiple choice questions or draw or do drag and drop activities while you're in the presentation. So they are able to be more engaged and uh, also gives students student voice so everybody can have a voice and participate in class. So that's a great resource as well. Uh, I'm gonna pop over to my Chromebook one last time. 
Um, and oh, looks like it fell asleep again. Sorry about that. I was going to show a few more uh, um, uh, accessibility tools in there, but that's okay. Um, I don't probably have time to pull to pull it back up again. But there were a few we didn't see there, like uh, the large mouse cursor. That's nice. That way you can see your mouse a little bit better. And there's things like automatic clicks where you can hover your mouse above links and it will click for you. Uh, st uh, the 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 sticky keys option, uh, highlighting the mouse cursor, things like that that can help with navigation as well. And for all the rest of my educational technology resources, be sure to visit my site at controlaltachieve.com, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to my YouTube channel, sign up for my email newsletter, and check out my book, Control Alt Achieve, Rebooting Your Classroom with Creative Google Projects. Thanks so much and take care.